Hello and welcome to the Ellen Maid Book Club. Today I'm doing another tag. So today I'm doing the off the top of my head tag. Um, no one tagged me to do this. I just thought it sounded fun. So I wanted to do it. <laughs> um, I saw Renee at Beyond Books do it. And of course, Pat at Book Chat with Pat. And it was created by Gina at the library mouse Gina. So I'll have links for all of those below. It's supposed to be like off the top of your head. So I've written down my answers and like picked out a few books to show you. Then I've tried not to like <laughs> improve my answers. So yeah. Okay, here we go. Question number one. What was your favorite picture book as a child? The ones that I can think of off the top of my head is Anything illustrated by Sven Nordqvist, who is a Swedish illustrator, and he's illustrated all of the books about um, Petson and Mamma Mu. <laughs> and um, yeah, there are a lot of different stories that he has illustrated and written as well. They're just so detailed and so like silly and funny. There's like so many little characters that you can sort of find in the pages and they're very like whimsical and yeah I just remember that being really fun to look at when I was a kid and still like as an adult it's <laughs> they're very funny. There's one about an old man who loses his hat and then he goes <laughs> around in his like nightgown trying to find the hat um, so that's a really funny story and the pictures are also very funny. Um, and then there's one which is a bit more like educational about like numbers. So it's, I think it's called Minus and the Big World or something like that. And he's also like going on some kind of quest. <laughs> on the first spread there's um, one of each like character or thing or whatever. And then when you turn the page to the next spread, there's two of everything. So like everything being illustrated, there's two of each. So if there's boats in the pictures, there's two boats or two cows or two flowers or two little, you know, imagined creatures. And it goes on like that. So I just remember, you know, you could sit there and count like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like where's number eight? I know there's supposed to be eight. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just, I just, they're just amazing. So number two is what series did you love as a child? And when I was a little bit older, I remember reading the five books. I don't know what they're called in English. Fantastic Five or something. I can't remember, but I like those. Um, and then there's also a series by a Swedish author called Henning Mankel, who wrote um, books about Joel who is a boy who lives with his father, if I remember correctly. They're like middle grade books. And yeah, I remember reading that and enjoying that. And question number three, the worst book you have read or tried to read? I can't really think of any that were bad. Um, I think I just forget them if I don't like them. <laughs> um, the one that I could think of off the top of my head was, um, when we had to read All Quiet on the Western Front um, in school. I think I remember liking it at the end or like having read it, but it was just one of those books where it's like, it doesn't sound very intriguing. <laughs> it sounds very boring and it's just like, we have to read this. Um, but yeah, I think I thought it was good. Um, but that's the one that I could think of that I maybe wasn't so excited about reading. <laughs> Question number four is your favorite reading or book memory? So I have two that stand out to me off the top of my head. Um, the first one is when I read um, the first Harry Potter book. Um, I talked a little bit about that in my time and place tag video. I remember reading this at the airport in Seattle, I think it would have to be, um, when we were going home from Los Angeles back to Sweden. Um, I just remember like reading every second line <laughs> aloud to my parents. I was like, listen to this, <laughs> like, this is amazing. <laughs> listen to this sentence. Um, yeah, it just was off to an amazing start. I remember with like the next 
um, like Mr. and Mrs. Dursley and how their necks were. Like he had barely none at all and hers was like so long so that she could look at the neighbors and yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have to see, but it, yeah, it says, Mr. Dursley was the director of a firm called Grunnings, which made drills. He was a big beefy man with hardly any neck, although he did have a very large mustache. Mrs. Dursley was thin and blonde and had nearly twice the usual amount of neck, which came in very useful as she spent so much of her time craning over garden fences, spying on the neighbors. Yeah, it's just fantastic. The other one that stands out to me is The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. Um, this is also one that I vividly remember reading and loving and being like completely immersed in and obsessed with and it just had everything that I could ever want in a book. Um, there's like symbolism, obviously, which I loved. Um, religion, language, mystery, like suspense. Rome. <laughs> it just had everything that I could <laughs> ever want. Um, and my dad also loved this book and we like were discussing it and yeah, it's just a very fond memory of reading this. I think I also felt a bit of extra connection to it because of Da Vinci. Um, Leonardo Da Vinci was kind of my artist <laughs> growing up. Uh, like my brother had Salvador Dali my sister had Monet and I had Da Vinci. I don't know how that like came to be that we had an artist, but it was just an artist that we sort of associated with each of the <laughs> siblings. I don't know. Um, but Da Vinci was mine because I, when I started to learn how to write, I used to write backwards, like with my right hand, but I would write <laughs> backwards. And apparently he did too. So there was like, oh, you're just as smart as Leonardo da Vinci because you write backwards. So yeah, that might be silly, but that's <laughs> uh, probably an extra connection for me when I read it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Number five, a book you loved as a movie. And I have to say, I haven't read a lot of books that have been made into movies, like reading them before and then seeing the movie adaptation. The ones I could think of is Harry Potter, and I loved those movies. Like, we didn't go to the cinema a lot when I was growing up, but my dad and I would see all of the Harry Potter movies um, at the movies <laughs> when they came out. Um, so that was a very special memory for me, and like a special tradition that we had, because he also read the books and loved them. The other one that I could think of is Lord of the Rings, which I haven't read all of the books. I've started to read them, and the movies are just a lot more <laughs> accessible and fast-paced um, and I know that the books are for the true fans or whatever <laughs> and I might try reading them again at some point but yeah I just um, I love the movies um, can't say that I have read all of the books sorry <laughs> and then the other one that I could think of is Big Little Lies but I also saw that, like the show, before I read the book. But I think that, that was very well done. I think they're both very good. And I think they're very, I think the show is very true to the book. Question number six is a book you wish they would make into a movie. I would have to say Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Safon. I remember reading it and I was just like, I want to see this as a movie. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how that would be done, but if it was done well, I think that would be amazing. Um, and the other one that I could think of is um, the Akubian building, which is about the people who live in a building in Cairo, I think. Um, yeah, I think there is a movie made, um, but I haven't been able to, like it's not accessible, it's not available anywhere, because I remember searching for it online, it was just like, yeah, there was a movie made, <laughs> but maybe it was made in Egypt or something and it was like for a local audience. I don't know, but I would love to see this as a movie. <laughs> okay. And then I also mentioned in my March wrap up video um, that Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid and 
Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes read like movies, like it was very easy to picture them and I think that both of them would make fantastic movies. Question number seven, a book character that you would like as a friend. The ones that I can think of off the top of my head sort of come from the books that I've already mentioned. So the first one would have to be Hermione from Harry Potter, obviously. Book smart, a good friend, intelligent, brave, all of the above. The other book character that I would love to have as a friend is Cersei from Cersei by Madeline Miller. Um, yeah, that would be cool. I also thought of Madeline or Madeline in Big Little Lies because I just mentioned that, so that was in my brain. I think she's loyal and badass and just a fun person <laughs> to have as a friend. Um, and then the other ones that I could think of <laughs> was like sort of childhood friends. Um, and so then I thought of Alphonse Oberg, <laughs> which is a character from a Swedish children's book. He has an imaginary friend as well, and he just has, yeah, he has a very vivid imagination and um, creativity, and yeah, <laughs> if I was a kid, I would love to be friends with Alphonse. <laughs> and the fifth one that I wrote down was um, Baloo from <laughs> The Jungle Book. I don't know, it would be really fun to have a friend like him and live in a jungle. <laughs> Question number eight is a place you want to visit because of a book you read. So again, this is going to be based on <laughs> the books that I had in my head, um, but Hogwarts obviously would be amazing to visit. I also, of course, wanted to visit Rome after reading The Da Vinci Code, um, and I have been to Rome since. <laughs> so that was a great experience for me. Um, I went there with my Latin class, which sounds incredibly <laughs> snobby <laughs> and privileged, which it was. It was a great thing for us to be able to do as students. Um, and yeah, it was a really fun time. We were there for a week and like walking around and seeing all the sights and um, yeah. Um, question number nine, a nonfiction book that you would recommend. The ones that I could think of off the top of my head, these two books that I read um, at university, so these are like course <laughs> literature, but I'll mention them anyway and if you're interested you might find them interesting. I don't know. The first one is Modern Hatreds by um, Stuart J. Kaufman, The Symbolic Politics of Ethnic War. So this has a lot of different case studies from different parts of the world and it explores um, what kind of factors bring ethnic groups together and what drives them apart. And I just find that kind of thing fascinating. It's also a lot of like language and symbolism and, um, you know, traditions and the perspective on the others and yeah I just find that kind of thing um, super interesting and the stakes are so high like <laughs> the way that you talk about your group and another group can have such strong impact to start a war like that's just yeah the power of language and other stuff <laughs> Um, it says, ethnic conflict has been the driving force of wars all over the world, yet it remains an enigma. What is it about ethnicity that breaks countries apart and drives people to acts of savage violence against their lifelong neighbors? Stuart Kaufman rejects the notion of permanent ancient hatreds as the answer. Dissatisfied as well with purely rationalist explanation, he finds the root of ethnic violence in myths and symbols, the stories ethnic groups tell about who they are. Ethnic wars, Kaufman argues, result from the politics of these myths and symbols, appeals to flags and faded glories that aim to stir emotions rather than to address interests. And then the second book that I um, thought of was Saving Strangers by Nicholas J. Wheeler. Um, it's called Saving Strangers, Humanitarian Intervention in the International Society. So both of these books are 
political science. I don't can't remember if I said that. It's a little bit heavier, I think, to read or like, yeah, it's very like <laughs> textbook. So this book explores humanitarian intervention. So if and when it's right to invade a country and saying that it's to save the people kind of thing. I'm not going to go into that more, <laughs> but interesting. And then I have two more that came to my mind. And the first one is Black Like Me by John Howard Griffin. Um, and this was an experiment done by a white man who wanted to experience what it's like to be a black man, basically. In the deep south of the 1950s, a color line was etched in blood across Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. Journalist John Howard Griffin decided to cross that line. Using medication that darkened his skin to deep brown, he exchanged his privileged life as a southern white man for the disenfranchised world of an unemployed black man. And then this book is the documentation of that experience and I think it's worth reading. It's a little bit problematic that uh, it's, it takes a white man to explain the horrors of being a black man, like, you know, but if that's what it takes, I don't know. This is one that I could think of. And then uh, the last one that I'm going to mention is uh, a Swedish book called Islamophobia or Islamophobia <laughs> by uh, Matthias Gadell, who is a Swedish professor in religion science. <laughs> so in this book, he analyzes um, Islamophobia and sort of debunks myths and misconceptions about Muslims and how Islamophobia has evolved throughout history, um, in Sweden in particular, and but like in general as well. So books like this, I think, are really helpful and important and eye-opening and yeah, sort of gives you a bit of backup to say to someone, no, <laughs> that's not true. That's not actually true. So would highly recommend reading this or similar books on the topic. Question number 10. If you could hang out with an author all day, who would you pick and why? Um, so the first person that came to mind was Astrid Lindgren, who is the Swedish author of Pippi Longstocking and Ronja Ravodotter and lots of other books, um, children's books. Yeah, I think that would be fascinating to talk to her about society and just, it would be like a big hug, I think, and also an intelligent conversation. Um, and the second person I could think of is Natalie Haynes, <laughs> just because I recently finished Stone Blind by her, and I just, I could listen to her talk about Greek mythology all day long. <laughs> um, she has such a comforting voice and comforting way of telling the story, and it was just, yeah, I could listen to her all day. <laughs> So that's my answer for that. If you feel like doing this tag, please consider yourself tagged. Um, go ahead and do it. I would love for you to tag me in it to let me know that you have done it so I can watch it. Um, other than that, I don't think I'm going to tag anyone in particular. I was just excited to do this tag and talk about these books. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I would love to hear if you have any thoughts on any of the questions or any of my answers or any of the books that I mentioned, please let me know if you do it or if you have any answers that you would want to share in the comments. Um, thank you so much for being here and watching and all of that. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.